So we have deliberately added a whole series of learning labs um, and have expanded the schedule. One, because we wanted to do something to replace what would have happened next week as far as Power Summit. And, um, but we also want And it happened again. Tammy can't hear you. I think we lost Tammy. Tammy froze. Mm -hmm. Did you guys' the screen go black? Tammy, um, we just lost Tammy. Yeah, Tammy yeah. did. Tammy did freeze momentarily. Um, I know part of what she wanted to do today. Unfortunately, she has all the information for this. <laughs> Um, <laughs> of course she does. However, I know um, that Grant, Doug, and Dan were going to help her out with this. So, Doug, you want to start off with your words of wisdom? You're on, Doug. <laughs> I can tell you using something like Zoom, similar to what we're doing uh -huh. right now, and I don't know whether you all do you can you all see each other at this point? Yes. Yeah. 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 Speaker. So okay. <clears throat> Susan Constant, we don't see you on video. No. Vicky Toffler, we don't see either. We don't I don't see all 23 of us. There are scroll bars that you can scroll up and down. Oh, okay. They have their video off on purpose. Okay. Where you can do okay. gallery okay. view and see everybody at once. Gotcha. Well, that's what I was talking about. If up in the up in this up where it says up near speaker view and so on, there you can you can pick to only be watching the speaker. You can pick a, a small group or you can do a gallery. Like right now, I'm literally seeing everybody who's got their their camera on. I'm seeing all of you simultaneously. I use that a lot whenever I'm facilitating, so that I can literally be watching the facial reactions of people in the room exactly the same way I would if I was if I was live. Mm -hmm. uh, I've probably been using Zoom sessions because of uh, how, how widespread a lot of my clients are um, and how spread they are even within their own organizations. Um, I did a whole session, the whole series last year where I did a kickoff with people in Mexico, people in Texas, and people in, in Wisconsin. Um, and I, and I got to admit, it worked like a dream. Uh, our ability to share screens and so on, some of the capabilities of, uh, of this is actually pretty, is pretty amazing. Um, I, I'll typically ask people, unless there's noise in the background, I'll typically ask people to not put themselves on mute, just so that if all of a sudden somebody grunts or something like that, I'm picking up the verbal cue exactly the same way that if I was in the in the room with them um, but the uh, I encourage you to play around with it uh, literally since this morning at nine o'clock I have probably been on zoom for real with clients as well as as well as paradigm folks for about five hours and 45 minutes out of the six hours and 12 minutes that uh, uh, that's been that's happened since nine o'clock. I've literally just gone nonstop with this kind of stuff. Today, I even helped a client who was trying to put out an emergency email. He was saying, "I don't know whether to phrase it this way or this way," and I said, uh, I, "I said to somebody, go back onto Zoom." I had only been talking with him earlier today. I said, "Go back into Zoom and share a screen," and we were able to edit his uh, his email that he was trying to get out to clients as quickly as possible in real time. So there's so many advantages to uh, to being comfortable with this with this technology. So that's kind of where I was coming from. Uh, Wendy, I will Wendy or Tammy, I will kick it back to you, and, and and you can kick it to whoever you want to go next. Wendy, I can continue to go through my agenda, but if you don't mind and you have time, if you could just stay on for safety precautions, <laughs> in case my internet goes down again. We actually conducted a complete mutual evaluation today from 10 o'clock till almost two o'clock. Um, we had three participants, one in Florida, one in Tennessee, and one in Pennsylvania. Um, and we've been trusted advisors. When we became trusted advisors, we decided 
uh, for a lot of business reasons, not the crisis that we're all dealing with right now, that we were going to go completely virtual except for Power Summit to save the obstacles of someone having to come to Reading for a mutual evaluation, you know, investing the time, investing the money. Um, what used to be Fast Start is now called Agility Training. It is 100% virtual. Uh, assessment certification, 100% virtual. And with the, ex we've been using a couple of different products. We have moved to Zoom. We've had the most success with that, obviously. I don't think what I just experienced was in my system. I think it, you know, one of the guests today on the mutual evaluation had some connectivity problems because of the usage that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everybody's going to experience that eventually. But we have had great success. There's a lot of products out there. We have uh, we use GoToMeeting really heavily. Uh, they have a lot of uh, connectivity challenges. So with rare exception, we've had great success with Zoom. This, and we don't have any connection with Zoom except we're a customer. So I would recommend it really highly as well. To Doug's point, you can do the gallery um, and view so you can see everybody. It allows you to have the body language. Um, some people aren't comf co uh, comfortable uh, sharing their, appear their physical appearance, but we've had a couple of folks do that in the mutual evaluation, but they were still very engaged through their questioning and things of that nature, although I do agree with Doug. Um, it allows you as a facilitator to see more of the visual cues but we've had great success uh, with using Zoom. And I know there's a lot of people on our network that believe there's great value in being face-to-face, -face, and I don't disagree. I would say probably now between 75, 85, if not close to 90% of the coaching uh, facilitation is being done in some virtual format, whether it's via phone. Obviously, the phone is a little bit more personal. Uh, and I don't think there's any reason why you can't connect with your clients in this particular way. Jerry Houston, I don't see is on here. Um, even before what's happening has happened, he in, works with his clients. They do the kickoff in person. Mm -hmm. Everything in between the kickoff and the graduation is done virtually. So they do the kickoff in person and then they do the graduation in person. And that's the way he proposes the project. And he's been doing that now for probably, you know, five, six years. Um, it just, We've had a lot of folks that have had a lot of uh, really good experience with it. You know, if you've got prospects in the queue, I mean, obviously physical networking is not a thing to do right now, but I know some organizations are trying virtual networking. The Zoom product also allows you to put people into breakout rooms. So the host allows you to do that. So if you were the 20 people that I was facilitating in a leadership process, you know, I could break out Nancy, Laura, and Susan and go give them something to do. You know, I could break out Laurie, Andrew, and Mark and go have them go do an exercise. What happens is, is that when you, you, man, you can set up the uh, breakout rooms, you say, hit go, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. and then the recipient gets instructions on their screen. All they have to do is click a button, and then magically Nancy and Laura and, and Susan are off in a corner. And when they're done, they can hit go back to the master group. So you literally can almost duplicate, assuming technology cooperates with you, you can almost du duplicate what you're doing in uh, a face-to-face -face, uh, facilitation. You know, schedules are subject to change because people um, – are a little squirrely right now. Quite frankly, I'm surprised we had all we, we had the three participants today. But I think people are using this time as a way to do other things that are productive. And even though people's schedules are somewhat subject to change, most everybody's at home now um, doing the social distancing. And I think as much as you can connect with your prospects, your potential prospects, clients, and otherwise, it, it provides a positive conversation which I think really spends a lot of time mitigating some of the distraction. I mean, if you sat and, I don't know about you guys, but if I sat and watched the news all day long, I would have to find a really tall ledge. Um, <laughs> Cause it's just, I mean, it's just horrible. I mean, the situation is horrible. I'm not, I'm not dismissing it by any stretch of the imagination, but depending upon which TV channel, it's like the world is coming to an end. Um, I found a really it, tall it, margarita is a good alternative. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
which is what I was accused of having earlier, but it's only ice water. Um, <laughs> so I think it, the more interaction that we can continue to have, like we were doing with you guys, it just creates a positive and mitigates that, that distraction. And I think it mitigates some of the fear. It doesn't make it go away because we're certainly not going to dismiss the importance of what is going on in our world. But I think focusing on the positive, which is exactly why we've added so many learning labs, because to keep you all connected and you know focus on that positive. Um, I don't know if you're if you've done any research. If you haven't used Zoom, did it mess with my screenshot? It did. Um, there are four different ways that you can interact with Zoom as far as a customer. There's a free version that allows you a one-on-one -on -one account. Um, that does not allow you to do breakout rooms. Then there is a pro version, um, a business version, a pro version, and then an advanced version. We're using the one that is the business version. It's $14.99 a month. It allows you up to 100 participants. It gives you the breakout room option. So we have not the free, but we have the cheapest of the three. From a trusted advisor's perspective, like I said, it's 15 bucks a month. It gives you the opportunity to do the breakouts. You can have up to 100 participants. Uh, the next one up allows you to have 300 participants. You can share facilitation. You know, so I could throw this over to uh, Doug and make him a co-facilitator so he could share his screen, those types of things. You can record them, as you know, if you participated in these learning labs, we record them on a regular basis so people can go back. So one of the things you may, you can also use Zoom to record messages. If you're throwing stuff out there that's positive for your customer base, you can sit in your office, you can use Zoom to record your message. The message that we sent out uh, last week, I was sitting in a conference room down the hall using Zoom as a way to record, gave it, edit gave it to Jenna to edit some of my goofy stuff in the beginning and some of the goofy stuff at the end but it's a way to make it personable to put messages on your website or something that you can send in an email it's like I'm thinking about you if there's something I can help there's a lot of uses that can be very very powerful not just in this particular time of crisis like I said, we've been using it for the last two years and it's been very effective. So I know Doug and Grant and uh, uh, Dan had agreed to share some of their experiences. I don't know if Doug, based upon my text, you were covering my collective butt or if you had additional thoughts uh, that you wanted to share based upon our plan for this time together. Uh, Tammy, I'd like to comment on technology for just a minute. Please. Uh, well, one of the enhancements you can do is a, a better uh, camera and you get a camera and a microphone combined. And I think the one I call is Papa Luke sitting right up there on top of my screen. And I believe it was $49. But the difference between the standard camera on your laptop or your computer and this is, uh, is tremendous. So you get a high D picture, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, the other, uh, uh, other thing I've found, and if you look around at all of our pictures, and I, you know, I've got a great face for radio, so I don't put on makeup before this, but <laughs> lighting makes a big difference. And so uh, Doug is, uh, has got the uh, Japanese zero effect where he's coming in from the sun <laughs> with camera over both shoulders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, each of you's got that bright light in the back. We can't see you well. Uh, Arnie's got all of his lights out. And uh, he was looking rather ghostly back there. <laughs> uh, but so if you're in a group with uh, customers, that does make a difference. One of the enhancements I put up is I, I won't shift my camera to show you, but over on this right wall is a big screen with another camera on the top. So when I have a group around this small conference table and I can accommodate you know, six people easily, we can have a discussion. And uh, one of my clients, we connect uh, his team in, in the UK 
and the uh, CFO of the company in Colorado, uh, where they can see all of us in the group. Uh, mm -hmm. The camera up there collects the sound as well as the picture, and we can see them on the, on the screen. It's a cheap alternative. I just brought an extra screen when we bought a bigger television and mounted, mounted that one on the screen. And uh, we've got a full video conferencing facility. Uh, just uh, typed a message on the, the chat for everybody. Uh, and uh, one of the innovations we were, we were trying out, I was talking to a guy in Amsterdam and we wanted him to be able to submit his ideas. And I was using sticky notes with the group here. And he said, well, let's just use the chat. I can, put, I can fire my ideas into the chat. Somebody else could put them on the sticky notes and they could have them right here. And you can also save the chat at the end of the session. Okay. Doug. That reminded me of two things. A lot of times if I'm doing a session with people all over the place, simultaneously, I will create a Google Doc so that if we're working on things, not only can I type in real time, but if you've ever seen my keyboarding skills, uh, you'd never know that I took typing in high school. But that being said, one of the coolest things about creating a, a Google Doc is you can share the screen with the Google Doc where people can be looking at the Google Doc fr from their location and everybody can be entering data in that Google Doc. It makes for a very, very fast facilitation tool. Mm -hmm. And you, you can choose, you know, who gets, to sh who gets to edit that, who gets to comment on it so it's got protection pieces. So I also use that uh, simultaneously when, when, I'm, when I'm doing this. One thing that I have learned, and I didn't know whether Dan or Grant were going to speak to this, when I call a, a client who's sitting in their conference room, I, I ask them to not use the microphone that comes with their camera on their smart board because I find it really, really fails way too often. So instead, instead of using the microphone on their smart board, if they've got I forget the name of the phone, but it's very popular in conference rooms. It's kind of triangularly shaped. Mm -hmm. And I always ask him to dial in from that conference room landline phone. Now, I've also asked people that they can call in from anybody's cell phone. But that combination, there's two things that you need to know. <clears throat> Number one, that combination of dialing is so far superior, particularly oh. when I did a group where I had multiple conference rooms in eight locations around the US. Uh, if people did anything other than what I just described, it would create feedback loops from hell. So they've got to keep their, their camera on mute and just keep their speaker phone in, on in speaker. People could go back and forth across all kinds of different locations flawlessly but that was a lesson that I had to uh, that I had to learn when I uh, when I facilitated um, that way. The other thing that I in the bottom of your screen, if you haven't played around with it, next to the record button, you probably see something that's called reactions. And so if I click on that, all of a sudden, if somebody says something and we want to give them some verbal feedback, you can uh, click on the reaction and or uh, you know, something like that. Unfortunately, somebody said to me the other day, how come there's no thumbs down? But that's okay. <laughs> I guess I guess we'll figure that one out as, as we go. But just some people will use that to be able to take, you know, quick votes and this or to be or to be able to get a sense of yeah. how how people think they are, are going. So those are just mm -hmm. some of the kind of the tricks that I've learned along the way. Grant, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, is there a recommended amount of you that should be in this screen? Like your whole head, your shoulders and your head, <laughs> um, up from above, down from below, straight on from the side? Is there a uh, look that's a the, uh, look? The, the good television practices, you should look like the talking head that you see on professional television. 
uh, it's about the way we're seeing you, Susan, which is, you know, you're looking pretty close into the, the camera. Uh, television rules say you never look down into the camera because that uh, gives people the view that you're looking down on them, <laughs> who okay. some people psychologically don't like. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I, I try to sort of aim the camera at my nose. If you're looking off to the side like this, people will think you're not paying attention. Okay. So um, it's, uh, and so what I like is when I, I'm looking at the person, I'm actually looking at their eyes as if I'm talking to them. Thank you. I had a, I had a question of something that Tammy said about setting up a Zoom video and kind of sending it to someone. Do they get notification that, you know, somebody's sending you something? I think it really depends upon how you send it. If you send it an email, because that's what we did as a backup last week. We did it, we loaded it up on the Zoom, uh, the YouTube channel and we sent a, a blast email, but we know what percentage gets opened and we wanted to be very proactive. So we also sent a link via email. So okay. if you want to be really personable about it, that would be a very easy thing to do and you know with fair certainty that they're getting it. Mm -hmm. So one thing, I, one thing I didn't check out is whether all the recipients know if I punch record or not. Um, we, we, could, we could test that right now if you, you please could, request yeah. permission from the meeting host. Okay, you have, to, you have to ask about the host, but I think the host can check it and click record without telling the rest of us. It, it shows up in your upper left-hand corner. You'll see it says recording. And oh, so yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Red flashing yeah. little light. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. From, from, what I under, whoops, from what I understand, there's also ways that you can, if, on your own system, like I do not have mine um, set up to record every call. Uh, you can check up from what I understand in the in the zoom preferences you can check a box so it'll record everything mm -hmm. um, I haven't found a need to do that mm -hmm. yeah we don't automatically record either um, like we don't record the mutual evaluation on purpose we record these for on purpose for a different reason most times we do record agility training and assessment certification because the participants want like the fact that they can go refresh, you know, if they miss something in their notes, um, or you know, I remember Tammy said this about you know what the negative sign means on attribute index, but I haven't done enough, so I can go back and I can, you know, you know, use it as a tutorial. You can also choose whether you just record the audio or the audio and the video, and sometimes I'll do just the audio because. Oh. The combination of the two takes up a lot of megabytes. One of the things that I recognize, just to build off of that, is you when you record, you can choose to record and store it on your own computer, or you can have them record it in the cloud for you. And I got to admit, since I'm not keeping things for any great length of time, if I'm recording a conversation with somebody, normally it's for something that's going to be helpful to them and so i will literally just record it as soon as you click end of call it automatically converts it that'll take anywhere from uh, typically within a couple of minutes and i will either send it to them i will send them a, send them a link if i think that i'm going to need something on a permanent basis i go up into uh, I've got both my own personal YouTube channel as well as one for Paradigm Associates and I will slide that video up into the YouTube channel, YouTube mm -hmm. channel and mark it private so only somebody who's got that link can see it and then I can delete it out of the Zoom so I'm not using my Zoom space because I'm assuming that YouTube is not going to run out of, out of space anytime soon. That's you, a great you, point, you Doug. Can, yeah. I was, I was just going to ask, Doug, this is Bertha. Just, that's a great point. So you're saying that's a unique link. So you would be able to save that space on your desktop or your laptop and then just have it on YouTube. It will point to the same direction for your Correct. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And you can also ask it to record individual participants, not everybody. Hmm. And, oh, uh, that's interesting. I yeah, so I, I, uh, very, very interesting application because our Tai Chi instructor is uh, trying to figure out how to present Tai Chi. And I was saying you know, with some of the moves, you really need three cameras. And I thought, huh, we can have three people checked in, each with recording their own chapter, and then I can put that together in GarageBand so we can cut a, cut a video and show it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So it's fun to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken is a true high theoretical. <laughs> You can, if you meet the requirements as far as processing, um, I was going to do it on this computer in preparation for this, but we, this computer is not set up with the requirements. You can actually change your background. So mm -hmm. if you don't want, and they give you some choices, um, they can give you just a black background and some other colored choices. So if you don't want to necessarily, you know, show what's in your office, you can change a different background. They, and it's under... More. Yeah, that's where it is. Thank you. Um, depending upon what you want them to see. Thanks. I heard uh, you were talking about the reactions while I was in and out, right? Yes. Okay. Did you guys talk about the chat feature? Not really. really? Yeah. Okay. So you also, there's a chat feature. It works pretty much just like any chat feature. You know, somebody, you know, one guy in Florida today during the mutual evaluation, because like Doug, I've been on Zoom all day today. And of course, our session on how to do a virtual, that's when I have internet problems. Um, but one of the guys in Florida had an internet problem as we were going to the personal interview and he could communicate with me, the host, without being distracting to any of the other participants. So you can, select if you want to chat with just one person or if you want to chat with multiple participants. So it gives you a choice of everyone or you can select a particular participant. So he was able to, and you can chat among yourselves um, as well. So he was able to tell me he was having technical difficulties instead of doing the personal interview part of the mutual evaluation. I just had him call my cell phone. So it was not a distraction for the rest of the group. And we got done what we needed to do. I have a question for the team. I, uh, I've used Zoom uh, one-on-ones and three or four people at a time. I facilitate a smart talk for a women group that's usually at a big conference room in a restaurant. Obviously, we're not doing that, and they've asked me to do the meeting uh, via Zoom next Tuesday. The majority of the people that will be receiving the link from the chamber, the chamber will set it up. Most of them are probably not familiar at all with Zoom. What are some of the things I should recommend to the chamber to do as they prep this link to go out? such as should everybody be on mute when they get signed in should they, I, I know it's just i'm anticipating um all 24 of you going when the phone when it starts because they really truly truly have already said oh my gosh what will we do they don't have time to do this type of type of call with those 24 women first so any suggestions that you all have for neophytes coming on to zoom for this meeting we do have a topic that is a round table discussion. They kind of raise their hand or say what they want to say when they want to say it. Any suggestions how to facilitate that? Uh, one thing I, that I've tried is instead of, before you deal with the big group, is anybody has any real questions about how to deal with this, run a smaller session before. Mm -hmm. And I find that some people are amazingly naive about using technology like this. Uh, so, uh, you know, we usually have to say, well, we'll start out, what kind of computer do you have? You know, if it's something from 1954, then good luck, you know. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, you know, they if if someone's using a laptop, how do you set it up? Uh, what are the, you know, just some some basic hints. And so that's been that's been helpful ahead of time. Uh, the other thing you could send out a brief flyer that suggests here's some here's some things you could look for. Um, the other thing helps is to turn on your uh, to turn on a session. And if you have the t unlimited session for fourteen ninety nine, you can you can have it running for a long time. So you could just say between the hours of one and five on Tuesday afternoon, uh, you can do your uh, check on to make sure it works. Oh, that's a good idea. Hey, Nancy. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I just did, I just put in Zoom tutorial. Oh. <laughs> and you have, all ki you have all kinds of stuff that people have already created. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. You got it. Or better yet. You, you guys also just you guys also just saw exactly how fast the, the ability to screen share, how helpful that can be. Which brings up another point. In your settings, you can limit who is able to share. Like you <laughs> 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 not picking on Doug, but uh, if, if you are, Nancy, like the, the session that you're talking about where you have a group of people or if you were to have a group of people where you don't necessarily know everybody that's in there or if it's an open link that anybody could get their hands on, uh, there have been some issues where people have hijacked those sessions okay. and started broadcasting sharing porn and other things and i don't think you want that to happen correct so, thank you um, it, it's good to be able to limit to uh, just the host can share or you can you can hand uh, individual uh, abilities to to different people to be able to share thank you I'll just, uh, since Tammy's not, or, or Tammy, are you still here? She looks like she dropped back out. I'll, I'll just make a few comments that uh, I've been using Zoom uh, through my Ring Central account for about five years now. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably not on as many calls uh, a week as, as Doug is, but um, I've been on, well, two already today. I'll have another one at Actually, I'm having um, a virtual beer at 4:30 with a uh, uh, for for networking. Uh, so somebody that we were going to go out and and probably would have gone to Zeppelin's up the street and and met after work for a beer, uh, we're going to log into Zoom and and have a beer and get caught up. So there, there's a real opportunity uh, to use this this way. The I had a uh, one of my coaching clients yesterday. One of her uh, objectives is to improve her social life. And she kind of threw up her hands. She goes, well, I guess that that's all kind of out the window now. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely not. I said, why don't you just get your girlfriends together? And if, if it's, if it's going to take an hour, nobody has to get a babysitter. Nobody has to travel anywhere. An hour is an hour. And you all can, you know, log in and, and have, uh, you know, a glass of wine together or whatever it is that you do. And, and share that time. We do it socially with friends of ours that we have all over the country. We'll have the laptop sitting in the kitchen on a Friday night while we're having cocktails and cooking dinner, and they'll be in you know, Arkansas or South Carolina doing the same. And it, it really does feel like everybody's there together. Like uh, so it's, it, it's good for business, most certainly, uh, but it, it's a great social connector uh, as well. Um, the other thing I would say is watch your resources. Uh, if you have Chrome running in the background and you have multiple tabs open, Chrome is a huge resource uh, mm -hmm. hog, and that can uh, sometimes limit and make you get a little choppy. Uh, so maybe not your internet connection may be strong enough, but it may be just the resources of your computer that are getting eaten up that can give you what seems like a bad connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess that's that's really. I, but you know, to, to the point of the sharing, uh, I use this a lot to do the advanced insights debriefs because I've got a little oh. uh, 
uh, a little uh, uh, PowerPoint built and I can just run that and they can see it, but I can still have the, the video up and running. So we you can still get the face to face and at the same time, but you've got the visuals there. And, you know, again, it's just, a, it's an efficient way and an hour takes an hour. You don't have the, the drive there, the drive back, neither do they. Uh, if you're leaving, and since we know most of those eight advanced insights debriefs tend to run a little bit long with good conversation, uh, it's just a really, really efficient uh, way to do things. Dan, did you say how you get, to, how you screen share and have the um, pictures of people up still? Yeah, when you, um, like if you go down and, and you see where the share is down there? Yes. Okay, so if you do that, you click it, it'll just, it'll move the, all of us in this case into kind of a small box. And then there's a little tab at the top where you can just have one person up, two people up. You can matrix it like this. So you can kind of set the side. If you have two monitors, which I do, I always drag the, you know, the, what we're looking at here off onto another monitor and have the PowerPoint uh, on the other one. So that way I can, monitor, I can use my mouse to, you know, circle things, highlight things, do all of the, the things that you would do in person with a pen. Um, but I can still have that eye contact. Thank you. One of the things I learned um, the hard way um, was when you do share, I was sharing, I had opened a bunch of documents because I wanted to bring them up as we were facilitating. And one of the things, if you share a document, I was sharing uh, what are affirmations. Mm. And I wanted to share the next document. You have to unshare whatever you have up and then share the next one. It will show on the screen whatever whatever things you have lined up to to share, but you've got to unclick or unshare that which is on the screen and then go share the next thing. And that gave me a little bit of, uh, you know, Ajna when I was first learning to do that. So at least that's the only way I know to do it. Yeah, there's actually a way in there that uh, if, when you go to share and you hit the button and the little window pops up, you'll see it says basic, advanced, under advanced, you can share just a portion of your screen. So if you have multiple uh, monitors, again, you can share, you know, a portion of that second one and still have, you know, what's behind it up as well. But you can, you can move that around and resize it. So that, that might help you a little bit. Hey, hey Nance. Mm -hmm. If, the thing that I did the other day, because <clears throat> I, I had a, I was doing this, I basically took all the Word docs and using the convert feature from Word. Well, in, in my case, it happened to be open office, but I converted all the Word docs to a PDF. Why? So that when I open up Adobe and you know, I could have all of those docs pre-opened, they would all just show as different tabs. Oh. And I could just go, I could click tab, 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 and it rotated it right through without having to stop share and reshare each time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a question. When you're scheduling meetings with Zoom, do you, I've used other video sharing tools a lot, but do you have your own, do you, is the link the same for every meeting and can you schedule multiple meetings out in the future if they all need different links? Or do you yeah, have yeah. one, do you have one link for every meeting? Well, you, you, can, oh. set the, you can set the link for any meeting that you schedule. So there's, uh, you can click the schedule meeting, then you can set the, the time and the, the, the topic and also the time of like 1 p.m. to 1.30 or mm -hmm. 1 to 5 or whatever. So those, you can have multiple links. But, but you can also assign a static link to yourself. 
So if you were in an organization, you might have multiple or, or ones that rotate, but you could have one static. Uh, so like uh, on our mastermind call, that's the same link every time. And, you know, we've booked that out for years. Well, I, I'm sorry, Virginia, I probably misled you. I thought you said length of time. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking uh, about... You're talking about the URL. Yeah, yeah so... Um, take, take Dan's answer, not mine. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, thank you. This is where that thumbs down button would be handy. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can you, speaking of the link, can you also um, make it unique? So if I wanted to make it my business name or my name, or can you edit that? Or you have to accept whatever it is that Zoom assigns you? That I don't know. No, the meeting has a title. And so it'll come up as a default, but you can put any title you want to it. Not the title of the meeting, no. but the link itself at the end after the oh, um, no, I've, I've uh, never thought of that. So okay. Bertha, Bertha, I was uh, going through the online uh, preferences uh, last night. I think you can, but I'm not sure. But it's, if you go to the online and there's several tabs that you can take into different aspects of it, I believe mm -hmm. you can do that. So uh, it's, well, Bertha, it's worth checking out. Yeah. Okay. Well, what you could do, Bertha, is you could just create a, uh, like a click here you know, mm -hmm. join my thing and then hyperlink that URL to it. Yeah. So that Great. they'll just see the click here, but that it'll take them to that, that hyperlink. Great. Thank you. I have one request and I don't know whether Wendy can pull this off or not, since she's not Tammy. Do you have the ability to put us into breakout rooms from your computer or because Tammy was the main host? Only the host can put us into breakout rooms. Right now, I can't. Oh, no, wait. I might be able to. Okay. I got to admit, that's. I, I, I haven't fooled around with. I haven't fooled around with that, and I haven't experienced it yet. Okay. So I don't know. Well, what I'm doing is I'm making four breakout rooms, and I'm going to automatically put you into the breakout room. So. Once I click this button, you will get an invitation to join a breakout room. So just accept that. And does that, does that, does that invitation come via email or does it come on our screen? It's going to come on your screen. It should be coming right now. Well, I'll be there. Yeah, look at that. That is where it's the person. And just there. so you can see as the trainer, I can pop in and out of breakout rooms. So I can actually check on participants as they are working on something. I can come in and I can go back out. See ya. <laughs> wow. To the group, that's what I'm up. And you just. Know. And just so you can you and I were working on. And just so you can see as a trainer, the trainer can pop in and out of the breakout rooms. So uh, so Wendy, you could tell us to get out or we can leave the breakout room on our own and just join the rest of the group. Correct. Do, can can you exit us from the breakout room or Wait do a second. Have to Let do me it? just look. Oh, it says leave breakout room at the bottom. So right. Bring us back to the main room. We wouldn't be leaving the meeting. Okay. Correct. You're just gonna go back to it'll say go back to the main main room yeah but i can actually call everybody back ah cool cool great we get back you may ask that yeah wendy's the host Lori, are you dust enough your stethoscope to go back into the medical field here short term to help people out yeah. Oh, I don't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not inside right now. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, I did, 
I heard it, I heard in Westchester County, the Westchester executive was basically appealing to anybody who had medical training that they may be able to uh, kind of volunteer and get drafted, so to speak, into helping out any way they could. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'm in Westchester. Uh, I guess I'm trying to stay away from as much news as possible, Doc. Yeah. Good for you. This is the one spot where ignorance may really be bliss. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Finally, my natural talents are, are at my advantage. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, Bertha, you can change the personal meeting ID uh, by going into Zoom, the preferences, uh, personal meetings, and then search down to personal meeting ID and click change. Thank you, Grant. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So Wendy, yeah. did you set up who would be in what meeting or did it automatically just assign people to meetings? For this exercise, I told it to automatically assign, but I also, as the, as the trainer, have the option if I wanted to say, Jerry, Grant, and Doug will be in this room. You know, Bertha, Linda, and Nancy will be in this room. So you can manually decide where people are or you can let it automatically break them into groups. You can determine the number of groups that you want. And, and then you put in when the meeting would end and return everybody to the no, meeting. No, actually, I just let you guys go and I actually went into two of the groups just to let them see how, as the trainer, I can pop into the room. So if you have a group working on you know, let's say you're doing a facilitation and you're telling a group to work on this exercise and you break them into little groups. I can pop in and see what they're doing. Um, we use this during assessment certification oh. when they're doing their practice debriefs. Mm -hmm. We can actually mm -hmm. pop in and see how they're doing um, and answer any questions. What I also did then, because I know how affiliates can be, and you get started in conversations, I closed the room. So you had a certain number of minutes before it popped you back into the main room. Okay, yeah, just so you set that up ahead of time. Mm -mm. No, I just I just said bring it close rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was that quick. I just, when I got back on, I clicked close rooms and it gives you a minute um, yeah. to close the rooms. Mm -hmm. Wendy, when you're, when you're assigning people to a room, is it a drag and drop or does, is there like a pull down by every individual name? Um, I believe all the all the participants are listed. All the participants are listed. So I can either leave it this way or I can move. So far I'm seeing a post Can you see it? Screen. No, no we, now, we see your menu, no. but we don't see anything dropping down. Do you see the menu here? No. 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 Hmm. We're seeing post attendee Zoom. Oh, so you can't see the pop up box. No. no. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> oh, bummer. It, it's a pop up box that comes up, and in the pop up box, it lists every participant. And then it allows you to move to, and when you click on move to, you can change whatever to whatever room, or you can exchange folks. So it's it is more or less like a drag and drop. Cool. And you, you just have the paid version of this. You don't don't have the webinar version. Nope, we just have the paid version. Okay. Wendy, can you move people in the middle of the group? Yes. Thank you. Wendy. I know my, my picture's not on. We, we blocked our uh, computer because of uh, uh, outside people trying to get into our computer and not seeing what's around. I have a quick question. Uh, maybe it's been addressed. Um, I want to say have 10 people on this, different people with different emails and so forth. Uh, how do I select those 10 people to be on Zoom? Do I send them individual emails individually or is it done through Zoom? 
If you're doing a Zoom, what's going to happen is you have to set it up in Zoom and you're going to get information. And it, you can copy and paste the invitation and then what you do is send that person an email with the invitation information. Okay. Or kind of like we do for our learning labs, how they're up on the affiliate website. If you take notice, ours is always the same. Well, maybe you didn't take notice. Ours is always the same ID. So we use our personal ID for every single one of these sessions. So we have that link on our affiliate website that you can just click on it. Okay, okay. I've also found that it works if you have a Zoom plugin for Outlook and book your meetings through that. It's up in the top panel. And you can, just like with GoToMeeting has it has a plugin, so does Zoom. And when you schedule the meeting itself, then it'll bring up the, do you want to send it to? And you can do it just like you're doing a regular email invite. May I share my, may I share a screen with you guys for a minute? What Nancy is talking about is here's sure. my, here's my, Here's my Chrome calendar. I, if I was going to set up a meeting, this is what I see in Chrome. As soon as I go more options, make it a Zoom meeting, and I click on that. And now anybody who I just I add in here in terms of guest is automatically going to get all this login information. So it makes it really, really clean. And then up here, I'll just talk about who the who the participants would be and I'd hit save and what Grant was talking about is you know all the other rules of, of setting up the calendar apply but I found that really really easy to make sure that people get the information thank you Mike you're on mute I'm just saying goodbye. I got to go. Oh. All right. Hey, so Susan, I have a question. Sure. Is there anything you wish Zoom could do that it doesn't do? <laughs> Pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, help the dog. With Zoom, we don't mm -hmm. upload files, so we've used Google Drive to share files. Well, <clears throat> is anybody tried using the whiteboard feature? Yes. Do you try doing it with the mouse, or do you do you have a, a pen on a pad of some sort? That um, What we found was the easiest thing to do the the writing with the tool was really hard we found it was right. easier to do the text ah there you go and i just did that by hitting the tech the t tool hmm. and you oh, have the right well, like my mm. nice okay yeah we've used the whiteboard but what we've but we definitely found it was easier to to do the typing than it was to try and write with it Right. Wendy, um, I got a question, Wendy, with regard to uh, doing the PowerPoint presentations when you have them in presentation mode. Mm -hmm. um, I was working with Dan, because I have to do this uh, for a class, um, and I noticed Doug was sharing his screen and everything looks fine. He's got the screen uh, on the left and the gallery of people are on the right. Mm -hmm. When I run PowerPoint slides, uh, and I put it into the present mode, mm -hmm. the PowerPoint does not move over. It fills my whole screen and the pictures are being superimposed on top of my slide. I can't read them. I don't know, has anybody come across that? Dan and I were trying to work on that yesterday. Mm. Grant, convert your P, can Grant can convert your, your PowerPoint to a PDF? And, yeah. and, you'll, and you won't lose control and nobody will be able to see what slide is coming next. Okay. Oh, that's, I, I, that's one thing. I didn't try that. That's a good idea. Okay. Just yeah. save it as a PDF. Don't print it to PDF. Right. Yeah. yeah the, the, the other thing that I have uh, found is that any presentations with animations 
where you you run into the problem you had, Grant, plus the fact that the uh, response time of the system, at least mine, is not quick enough to be able to take care of any animation. So you it you the PDF plain vanilla is the best way to go. Okay, great. Well, we are at uh, 404 and I want to be cognizant and, and uh, respectful of everyone's time. I, I do appreciate you taking this hour. Um, stay tuned. There will be additional um, learning labs coming up. They are all posted to the affiliate website. Um, if you have ideas for future learning labs that you think uh, would benefit the affiliate network, certainly send us an email. Um, remember, use the all at TA network LLC.com. So that way uh, all the staff gets it. Um, and we'll continue to keep these uh, learning labs going while we're all uh, practicing our social distancing. <laughs> and if you have any questions about Zoom and want to talk to us personally, you know, give us a call, shoot us an email, and, and we can help you out on a one to one basis as well. Can we all Thank give them a round of applause? <laughs> Wait a minute, where's that reaction? Is we go down here and do started the reaction button. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.